Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and we are gonna do what's in my backpack for my backpacking trip. I wanted to share with you what I'm taking and if I know any of the weight, which I totally don't, but some things I might and why I'm bringing what it is that I'm bringing. So as an intro, we'll be going for three days and two nights. So we're gonna leave in the morning. It's about a two hour drive. We'll get to the trailhead, drop off the car, get out, slap our backpack on and go. We're gonna do a loop and I'll take you along on that. So I need enough supplies, materials, things for three days of hiking and two nights of sleeping. So that breaks down to like two dinners, two breakfasts, three lunches, water, coffee. We're not going without coffee. My cook system and the, what's called the big three. So in the backpacking world, they refer to the big three as your backpack your sleeping system, so what do you bring in to sleep on, and your shelter. Now, I don't have the tent. My friend Jen has the tent. She's bringing it. We're going to share it. However, I think I'm buying a tent if we decide to go on another trip later this summer. Irrelevant for this video. So I won't have the tent, but I have my sleep system. I have my backpack. I have my trekking poles. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a pretty long video, so sit back. You might want some coffee because, duh, coffee. And I'm going to go over all the things, including my electronics. How am I going to record while I'm out there so I can share it with you? What am I going to wear? And the whole lot. All right. So sit back, relax, and come along for the ride. We're going backpacking. All right. One second. Okay. First things first. The backpack. I have a High Sierra backpack. Um, I got this at probably like Gander Mountain if I have to remember. I've had it for many, many years. I mean, we've, my, Jen and I have been doing this for a long time. So this holds 45 liters. So this would be like a weekender size pack for most people. I think Jen's backpack is a 60 liter, so it's much bigger. But it does have a separate compartment down here. There's lots of straps to hold things together, but there's a compartment down here that unzips when you're doing it properly. And this will hold, you know, like my sleeping bag and my bedding and stuff. In the bottom, there is also a little sketchy little compartment here, but it just holds the rain fly. A rain fly is like a rain jacket that goes over this. If it starts to rain, it keeps everything dry. Now I will be putting a trash bag in here for redundancy. I think this is water resistant. I don't remember, but I know we're expecting rain. So I will put a trash bag inside, but I'll show you that. But down here, I'm not going to. And then it has what, the, this is considered like the brain and it holds stuff as well. What I will put in here is my toiletries, bathroom stuff, things I need to get a hold of, lunch, things like that. And then this also clips down. And then inside is a big compartment with a drawstring top to keep things dry. And this is where I will put um, my irritants. This is where I'll put the trash bag and slide everything down in it because you really wanna keep your stuff dry, especially if it's gonna rain. So this is my backpack. There's also a front thing here, which I'm not exactly sure what's supposed to go in this zipper. It does, it's, I don't know. I mean, maybe my rain jacket would fit in there. I've never really used it because it's kind of silly. It doesn't, it doesn't hold anything. And then um, it also, you can put a water bladder in here and there's a hole to bring your drinking straw. I'm not using a bladder on this trip. And then this is the front. There's a chest piece and I'll show you when I put it on. I ordered this off of Amazon. It was like $5 and it's going to hold a bottle of water. This is why I'm not doing a bladder. I'm just bringing a couple water bottles and there is drinking water on the trail, but like this weighs two pounds by itself. Yeah. So you want to be always cautious of your water situation. 
and you want to read up where you're going. So that'll fit in here. And there's all these little clippy places like over here. I have a carabiner. I do bring this. It's for my glasses in case they get dirty or gross. This will help clean them. This is hand sanitizer because, you know, I'm going to be out in the woods. And then this is like a sweat rag, blow my nose, wash with it. And they're bandanas, so they dry really quick if I rinse it off in a stream to like wipe the sweat off or whatever. So that's my base right here, my backpack. It also has some hip straps. Now, what I don't love about this one is I don't have um, any side pockets. So I'm gonna have to bring a belly bag, but there's all these, I mean, there are literally loops all over this thing to attach. Um, but the one thing I don't love is that, A, I can't take this hip pad off and adjust the size if I want to go smaller, bigger, whatever. And there's no, like, place to put anything like my phone or snacks. Easy access so I don't have to keep taking my backpack off. So this, I want to say, was like $100. You don't have to go expensive. I've been watching all these videos where they're doing ultralight and they're spending three and $400 on a backpack. I mean, and that's fantastic. If you're going on a through hike or you're gonna be out for two weeks or a week, if you're just going over a weekend, you just need to find something that fits your body and is comfortable. That's my opinion. Now, um, my sleeping bag fits in here and I'm not gonna take it out <laughs> because it's work getting it back in. I washed it and dried it and it's all fluffed up. This is synthetic, a lot of people use down I just think down is a lot of work for a weekend trip. You don't want, you know, if it's gonna be cold, that's one thing. I don't, we're not going when it's cold. It's gonna be in the 50s or high 40s overnight. And I think the low on this bag is 30 degrees. So I have my sleeping bag. It's synthetic, it's a little heavier than down and it doesn't squish up as much, but it'll be fine for the weather that I'm going in. And I, don't, I bought this years ago on Amazon and the brand is um, Adventure by Swiss Sport. It's the Adventurer. Microtech Performance Insulation Outdoor. And like I said, I think it's a 30 degree is the low. But that's my sleeping bag, so my blanket. This is the Big Agnes. Air Core 20 by 72 by two and a half inch mummy sleeping pad. So in here is my sleeping pad. I'll show you when we set up the tent, but I blow this up and it keeps me warm. There's some insulating value. It's called R value, but let's be honest, it's comfortable. I'm not about sleeping on the ground. And this is an air mattress and it's pretty sturdy. You blow it up through here. It doesn't come, you just open it, blow it, and then you lock it down and it keeps all the air inside. I leave it cracked open when I'm not, um, when it's like this. So if there's any air inside it needs to escape and you know, humidity and all that. And it goes in its own little bag. Some people get rid of the bags, but my pack is gonna be tight. So I need everything packed down. So that's my, my bed, my blanket. Now, I'm going to be a little princess about this, and I did buy a pillow. This thing weighs like three ounces, and I'm going to consider it my luxury item or one of them, but it's a pillow by the brand Trekology. It's like $16.99 on Amazon. There are little rubber dots on the back that'll keep it from sliding. This side is not too rough. However, if you bring a buff, and this is too rough for your skin, you can slide a buff in it. But it also has this elastic that will um, allow it to attach to your bed mat because that is one issue with backpacking and bringing pillows and such. Everything is kind of slippery because it's water resistant and therefore things slide all over the place. But um, yeah, this is, I'm all about this life. Ooh, I'm trying to get it all packed up so I can get it back into its little bag. And th the thing is, yes, these little bags are ounces here and ounces there, which do add up. But like I said, my pack is tight. And so I need everything kind of together. And again, if we're going to be in the rain, I want to make sure I have a place that all of this stuff can stay. So that's my pillow. 
And then Jen has the tent. So that's my big three. Backpack, sleeping system, and shelter. That's important. Now, I am a trekking pole girl. I'm not going to bring lower these because I utilize the, I've already measured. Um, but these are nice and there's a spring to them. But when you're going up and down hills, it's nice to have something to lean on and protect your knees, ankles, hips. It's just nice to have these extra long arms with touching the ground for balance. And some tents actually use trekking poles to set up. The one tent I'm looking for will use trekking poles instead of tent poles. Um, also, what I have done is taken some duct tape and attached it to my trekking pole. Um, duct tape comes in very handy when you're out there for tears and rips, things like that, you know, things of that nature that um, you might need. And then we, I showed you my water. Now, what I'm going to do is put the stuff back in the backpack and I will show you the clothing that I'm wearing and bringing. So one moment. Okay, now we're going to talk about clothing. What am I bringing? Oh, my trekking poles are making me look like I have horns. Let's just lay those down. <laughs> All right. So for shoes, you can wear boots, you can wear your tennis shoes, you can wear trail runners. The only thing I recommend is that they have a decent grip because you're going to be walking in dirt, gravel, rocks, sticks, leaves, all the like, and you really want a good tread. So I bought Asics. Now there's a lot of very expensive trail runners out there. Again, there's like the Ultras and the Hokos and all of that and Merrells, and they're expensive. I got these for $60. They're gonna last me a long time because I will only wear these for backpacking or hiking. Um, and I went with a whole size bigger than I wear. You want an inch. If you're gonna be out walking on hills, any anytime, you want an inch from your big toe to the tip of this shoe. If you don't, your toes are gonna bang on the top of that shoe and you're gonna end up with blisters and potentially a toenail loss if you're not careful. Um, these are also pretty lightweight. They dry quickly, so if I get them wet, they'll dry fast. They have a nice arch support in them, and I know the brand. I wear Asics all the time, and I'm comfortable that I know these are gonna work for my feet because there's nothing more miserable than being out backpacking or hiking or whatnot, and your shoes hurt. Um, trail runners also, which I love, have this like loop to help you pull your shoe on. You can also use this for gaiters if you want to like a gaiter is something that goes over your ankle and shoe to keep rocks out. I didn't buy any for this trip, but if we go into Virginia, then I will get a pair of gaiters. But for now, I grabbed these at the Asics store. So that's my shoes. Then I bought some smart wool socks. When you're backpacking, outdooring, anything more than hiking, I would say avoid cotton. Cotton is water absorbent, therefore it gets heavy if it rains, it will start smelling much faster, and it doesn't dry very quickly. Wool blend, so these are smart wool socks. They're nice and fluffy and they are antimicrobial, so they won't smell as fast. And if your feet sweat or your sweat on your clothing, it dries quicker and it's warm when it needs to be. Um, these have a nice arch support to them and they're the length that I like. So I'm bringing, wearing one pair and I am packing a pair uh, because I know it's gonna rain and I don't wanna wear wet socks. So what I'll do is if it starts raining the first day out, um, when we get to camp, I will make sure these are dry. I will take my other socks, lay them out, and then the next day I'll clip them onto my backpack and while I'm hiking, they can dry in the air. And that way every day I should have a dry pair of socks. So I brought a second pair. Then I have these Columbia, these I think are cotton and it doesn't matter to me, they're thick and they're warm. And all I'm gonna do is sleep in these. These are strictly for sleeping. So at night they'll be fresh and clean. I will wipe my feet off and slip these on and they will keep my feet warm. They might be a cotton blend, but they also might be like synthetic. But again, I'm not wearing these. I'm just strictly sleeping in them. And they're nice and thick to keep my feet warm. So I have those. 
Then I'm packing knee pads or knee braces. And it's just cheap Dollar Tree ones, but enough to give my knee some support. I'm 50, guys. I'm being proactive with the knee pain. And I'm just packing two of these and I'll wear them while I'm hiking. Um, I have these Adidas dry fit shorts that I've had for 100 years. Um, and they are 100% polyester. And they're a dry fit technology. They don't rub, they don't bunch. I'm very comfortable in them. That's the thing you wanna make sure. So I'll be hiking in these. Um, I have a hat to hike in. Oh, I'll just put it on my bag, but if it gets sunny, I've got a hat to put on. I prefer the hats when I'm hiking that have the air ventilation in the back and not solid because hot. So we need airflow or if it's raining, and I have this on with my raincoat, it'll keep the hood from falling in my face and it will keep my glasses from getting wet. So that's important to me. I do have a gator that I've pre-washed. A gator is like a tube of fabric. You can use it as a scarf, you can wear it as a hat. So if I get cold at night, I can put it on. You can use it to wipe your face, you can use it to wash up with, and again, it's thin and it will dry. So this will be for a lots of stuff. So I will be bringing that. The shirt that I have is Dry Fit Technology. I actually got this one because I work at OSU. This is what the football team wears to work out in and they gave us each one. And it came from Nike and it is Dry Fit Made in Malaysia Athletic Cut shirt made for the men's football team. <laughs> But it's exactly the technology that I want and need because if I get wet, it'll dry quickly. And then I have a sports bra and undies that are, both of these are not cotton and there's no wires involved in this. Easy will dry quickly if I get, again, wet or sweaty. So I have that. Um, I have a poncho that I'm just throwing in because, again, it's supposed to rain. And then I have my rain jacket. This is wind and water resistant, not waterproof, but it is a jacket that if I get chilly or wet or need some protection, it unzips from here and I can just wear it. So I brought a rain jacket. And then for camp, I brought just cheap flip-flops. They weigh like three ounces, four ounces each uh, set. And when you get to camp, you wanna take your shoes off right away, get your socks off, let your feet air out and breathe. And these are great to do that while walking around camp. So I'll bring those. I did bring an extra pair of undies because life and I'm old. And then for sleeping, I'm packing. Um, these are actually fleece lined leggings. So they should keep me nice and toasty warm. Um, they're a little heavier than I would have liked, but I'm not investing a ton of money um, yet because we're, it's a first time out. So I will bring, these are, um, like I said, they're leggings and they're fleece lined, so they'll keep me warm while sleeping, but also if it gets cold during the day, I can put them on and wear them to hike in. And same thing, this is dry fit technology. It's just a light, like it's a pullover. It'll be warm enough to sleep in. And again, if I get cold, it is something that will keep me warm. All these layers are interchangeable. You know, like I plan on hiking all day and I roll them up and stick, I'm sticking them in this dry bag. Again, with the dry bags, yes, they add weight, but rain. So I, I, can't, I can't stress enough to protect your stuff to make sure it stays dry and clean because there's nothing more miserable then getting to camp and realizing your backpack is full of water and all of your clothes are sopping wet. Now, I, that's just misery to me. So what I will do is the clothing that I'm not planning on wearing, extra pair of undies, extra socks, are going in with my sleeping clothing. Right, because that's how we roll. And then this bag you roll it down. It's a tight fit in here, but I, it'll work. I didn't want to buy more bags either. You kind of squish it down, take a lot, as much of the air out as you can. 
and this will keep these clothes dry. Some people, instead of bringing a pillow, will put their other clothes in here and use it as a pillow. But for me, the thing is, when I'm getting to camp and I take off my shorts and t-shirt and bra, I'm gonna like let them air out. So I'll probably, as long as it's not gonna rain, I'll hang them on a tree. If it is gonna rain, then they'll go inside the tent to, for protection in my bag, but they will be, um, you know, airing out. So I don't wanna sleep on them. But this all will be worn on my body tomorrow, or when we leave. So there's that. That is it for clothing. I will wear the same outfit three days, but I don't want to carry a bunch of clothes that's useless weight. So again, dry fit technology helps with odor control because it's antimicrobial as well. And yeah, and if you get really hot and stinky, you can always wash it out in a spigot or in a body of water. Just don't bring soap. If you're going to use soap, you need to take it away from the water source. Um, I definitely recommend you look up Leave No Trace because that is important. You don't want to, to contaminate the water. You want to make sure you're being smart and all of that. So that is it for clothing. I will stick that in the bag and then we'll be back to talk about toiletries, personal care items, medications, and all the like. Okie dokie, we've got our bag of toiletries, bathroom supplies, medications, all the things. So fun fact, when you're in the woods, you need to look up how to go to the bathroom. So if you're gonna pee, you gotta get away from water, away from people, like 150 yards away, or feet, away. I got to relook it up, but you need to be away from water sources, trails, things of that nature where you go potty. If you need to poop, because we all do it, you got to dig a hole unless there's a porta potty around. Now where we're going, there should be porta potties, but if you don't make it to a porta potty or if you need to go, you got to dig a hole. And you also need to find out if you can bury your toilet paper in your hole or not. And it needs to be six inches deep. So some people bring a shovel. I'm just gonna use a stick. I have a shovel, but it's heavy. So there's that. Um, so you also probably need to pack out toilet paper. I just don't recommend grabbing random leaves. I don't, you don't know what you're doing. Watch yourself. Um, so I grabbed this, they have it in the camping section. It's a roll of toilet paper without the center. So just light and easy. Um, ibuprofen and Sudafed for my allergies and for pains and aches. And then I also threw in here some Benadryl in case we get bit by something cause it's happened. Um, I have facial moisturizer. This is a one ounce container, just different moisturizers, but it's also um, itch relief. So if I get like some eczema or something, but it's one ounce. I need that because my face gets super dry. I have my daily medicine. Ooh, where's that? There should be three in here. I brought an extra, but this is stuff I take every single day. Mostly it's um, my vitamins and minerals and supplements, but I put them each in a zip top baggie sealed very well. Again, rain. Don't forget your medicine. I, I, could I go without some of this? Sure. Am I going to? No. So I put it in each individual little zip bag for each night so I know what I need to take and an extra. One night extra just in case something should go wrong and we're stuck out there for an extra day. I have my medications with me. In here I also have, it's called um, Gear Aid or Tegaderm Tape and there's a couple patches for our pads. Now I could probably just take one, how many do I got in here? Maybe I only have one in here. No, there's four of them. So I probably will take like one with us. I think one is sufficient and I'll leave the other three at home. But this is really good for, in my case, for my sleeping pad. I mean, that's what I would be bringing it for. And I have little tiny scissors and I can cut it to fit the hole or use the whole patch. But this is our tenacious tape, maybe tenacious tape. It's really strong tape. So for repairs, I need that with me. And to go with that, I packed 
a couple alcohol swabs to clean the surface. So if I get a hold of my air pad, I would clean it with this alcohol and then I would put this tenacious tape on it to patch the hole. So we, I'm just gonna dump out my bag. We have that. Um, I did pack four alcohol or six, five or six, I don't know. I packed a bunch of alcohol swabs because there's many, many uses for alcohol swab uh, preps and they don't weigh anything. So first aid also means repair kits, just so you know. Um, I just brought a bamboo toothbrush. Some people cut their toothbrushes. I just think it's silly. I don't think you're saving enough weight to do that, but you do you. Um, I have a tiny little tube of toothpaste. Some, there's also dry toothpaste you can buy that are like tablets, but again, I'm only going out for the weekend here, guys. So not too concerned about that. Everything goes in a zip bag. I have some swabs. It just came in a first aid kit um, in case, you know, cuts or things. I did pack a pair of tweezers for slivers, some safety pins for repairs, but also they come in handy uh, if you are drying your socks on the back of your backpack. This came with a big old diaper pin that will clip, I will pin my socks to the pin to the back of my backpack or underwear or whatever you're trying to dry while you're hiking. Um, Band-Aids, I grabbed two small and I don't need that band-aid. Two small and two big band-aids. So there's four, whatever, band-aids, boo-boos, guys. A couple um, antibiotic ointments and one hydrocortisone in case we get bit by something. Hydrocortisone and these. I got these. This is Welly brand. I got them at Target, I think. They come in like a little first aid kit. But these are perfect for hiking because, you know, they're individually packaged. Now, if you're an old lady like me, I've got these little biofreeze packets and these are gonna help my shoulder, my knee, and my hip, cause I'm old. So I grabbed just a couple of those. I, this is what I have, but throw them in there to have some dental floss, which also doubles as thread. So you throw that in there. This is Luco tape. I took an old uh, chapstick, cleaned it out. There's a sewing needle down in there, a button, and then the Luco tape is for blisters. So I have that on the outside for any first aid. I have this powder stuff that I use for um, keeping my skin dry. So I have that, it doesn't weigh anything. This is an old eye drop bottle, like a saline drop. I put my Dr. Bronner soap. That is literally all we're gonna need. A drop or two works and it's biodegradable and it's good for it's not bad for the environment so that's soap to wipe things up my lotion my toilet paper and then I'm bringing this hairbrush that has a mirror and the brush pops out so I can brush my hair I will not be putting product in my hair tomorrow when I am getting up and leaving so I have my hairbrush so that goes in here now if my friend Jen is driving I'll have to take grandma mean for the trip down but that's it. That's all of my health and beauty, first aid, all the things. They go in, again, a waterproof bag. Then I packed out four. These are those Dollar Tree big body wipes. I have four in here. One for each evening to wipe myself off when we get to camp, like my feet and my body from sweat and from tick spray. I packed this. This is one ounce of Repel. It is a, it's a DEET. T ticks are bad right now. So I have tick spray. So at the end of the night, I'll be able to wipe my body off before I go to bed just to feel fresh. They don't weigh much, but if you're worried about it, you can dry them out, like lay them out on your counter and let them dry. And then when you get to camp and you want to wipe off, you wet them with your water and then the soap and hydration, you know, the properties will come back. And then this is because this is bug spray. I have it in its own zip bag in case it were to, um, open up. I really don't want that chemical all over my toothpaste. And then because I'm a princess and I guess this would be considered a luxury item as well for wiping my face in the morning at night. I, this weighs nothing, it, you know, and I love it and it makes me happy. So what I will do is warm some water and just use this plain just water and wipe my face and just feel fresh. So I'm throwing that in here as well. 
and that's it. The bag gets rolled down. I push all the air out because these are supposedly water proof. Um, I would say water resistant at best. I mean, truthfully, anything that gets saturated has a potential. And that's it. That's my whole first aid beauty. I'm not even bringing deodorant. Sorry, Jen, just weighs too much. And quite frankly, it's useless at this point. So as this is a good exercise for me because I'm pulling out things I don't need. Um, so that's it for that. Next up will be food. That's a favorite topic of backpackers. So I'm going to rearrange this camera angle and I'm going to show you all the food that I'm packing and how it fits into a bag. And the food. Here is my second luxury item. My cup. This holds two cups of water. It's got a handle on it. It has a travel lid situation and it makes me happy. So this is what I put my food in. I mean, my hot beverages in the morning. The benefit of this is it also is a measuring cup. So when I have to measure, now I did add one fourth, one half, three quarter measure because my food doesn't take a lot of water. Um, so it's clear plastic, heat proof, but it has its own little sleeve. So that's important to me. This is what's called a bear bag hanger. So I have 40 feet of rope attached to this little silky bag that's gonna be my rock sack. So you put rock in it, heavy, attached to a carabiner and you throw it up over a tree branch, pull it down and then I can attach my sack, my food bag to this and hoist it up into the tree. So this is important when you go someplace that doesn't have bear hanging or bear boxes. Um, it's for all animals, they just call it that. And that fits right inside my cup. And this is actually probably gonna hang on the outside of my bag. But I love this handle. I love that it's plastic. So you can use a metal cup. The metal gets hot and you will burn your mouth unless you have like lip protectors. But I just wanted something that holds a decent amount of coffee. Let's be truthful. And you know, it makes me happy. So I have that. This is my metal cup slash cook pot. It holds two cups of water. It has a nice handle over here, although they have better ones, which I should get that has the fold away handle. I'll look at those later. This boils, I can boil water in it in like two minutes. So that sits on top of the stove. This is the stove. This screws on top of this can with the screws, these open and your stove sits on top and the flame comes, shoots out of here and it um, heats up your water. This is a generic MRS pocket rocket. They have smaller ones, but I own this. So why would, I'm just not gonna go buying another one. And then I have my Vic lighter because you gotta have flame to light your stove and to light your fire. And this bag here is just something I got, it's just a little tech bag, but it holds my stove perfectly. So I have my stove and this is fuel. This is what I use to cook with. I'll show you when I make my dinners. I only use this for dinner or coffee in the morning. So there's my fuel. That's my whole kitchen, that's how I cook. Now. Over here, we have everything kind of separated by bags. For dinners, I have two of these meals. We're gonna be out two nights. So I have, this is deli roast beef dinner. It's just dehydrated. Um, the whole bag only has seven carbohydrates. So that works for me. And this is All American The Works Burger. Same thing, this one has six carbs. There's some fixings in here and that is what we do. So I have the large size dry bag. And first we'll put our dinners in. That'll be the last thing I need on any given day is my dinner. So we get those tucked in the bag. Now my coffee situation, I have instant coffee, regular and hazelnut. That's my sweetener. And that is powdered cream. It's actually regular old cream that's been dehydrated. I got it on Amazon, it's double bagged. 
And then these little tablets here are um, electrolyte drinks called Noon. And I have four of those. So if I get dehydrated, I have electrolytes. That will go down in my bag. Um, for lunches each day, I have tuna fish packets. So I have lemon pepper, herb and garlic, and hickory smoked. So each day I'll have a packet of tuna for lunch. And each day I also have parm crisps in different flavors. So this is original, this is spicy queso, and there's jalapeno. And I'll just eat these with the dry tuna. Now this is already packed aside because that's day one lunch. And in the morning, I will pack my lunches in that bag and keep it where I can get to it. Because that's the one thing is you got to be able to get to it. You don't want to have to take your whole bag down apart. Then I have in here, these are snack packs. One day is already packed away, but it's nuts. I have some gummies and some jelly beans. Those are the only two foods that I don't normally have. I have a keto bar and I have two Lily's chocolates for dessert after dinner. And these are made with um, stevia, they're sugar free. So I have one already set up and I have, these are for dinner time. So I'll take out my chocolates, pack this in, you know, overnight. So these are snacks that I'll eat during the day. But again, they're gonna go down in their bag. And it's just easier to keep things individually bagged. And then I can use those bags when I'm done as trash bags. Um, I have meat sticks for snacks throughout the day. The thing is I'll have to eat a little something on the hour. Um, I got these when I bought my meals. These are little Cholula sauces, little hot sauce. I love Cholula, so I grabbed two packs of those. And I'll just throw those in here. This is just some Himalayan salt. Another source of electrolyte for me if I get dehydrated, plus I can season my food. This is Justin's almond butter. It's literally just almond. There's no sugar, there's no preservatives or funky oils. I will have these with one of my keto breads for breakfast. So I need two breakfasts, so I have two of those. And then this will go in my overhead pouch. It is some snacks, my meat stick, um, my tuna for the day for the first day of hiking and this is a spoon it's a long handled spoon some people buy titanium they're like ten dollars I just got this at Walmart for 50 cents but it's a nice spoon to get down into the bags to get down into here into my dinner and it keeps you from getting food all over your hands so that stays with my lunch bag because I'll be having tuna fish and then this bag after I have lunch the first day, this bag becomes my trash bag to put all my papers and stuff in because you bring all that home with you. And then my water situation, I'm bringing two smart waters and I grab sport caps and I'll switch out one sport cap, um, but I'm not opening these yet. The, tall, the one liters don't come with the sport cap, but that's fine. So I have two liters of water to carry, which this alone is four pounds right here. Water is heavy, guys, but you need it. And that's it. That's everything I'll carry with me. Um, in my, when I go through my electronics, I'm just doing the same thing with this bag. When I show you my electronics, you'll see my day packs of snacks. Ooh, hold on. Got to put your fuel and my cook stove in this bag and then the other one will hang on the outside but this this is heavy too oh. all right and then you just get your air out because air takes up precious space there we go and these bags you can get them at walmart you can get them on amazon they're good for more than just backpacking i mean they're actually good for camping or anything like that where you want to keep stuff dry this thing is heavy but you know it is what it is and then this like I said will hang on the outside of my backpack so that is the food situation next and last will be electronics and how I plan on communicating with the outside world okay last thing electronics and my belly bag or my fanny pack I picked up a fanny pack I thought this was like seven dollars at Walmart I like it. it has a nice long strap it has multiple zip places so when i'm hiking or whatever i've got compartments 
to keep things in. So what am I packing in here? I brought earbuds in case I want to listen to music and I have an iPhone, so I need an adapter to plug in my earbuds. So I have a pair of earbuds because you don't want to listen to your music out loud. Um, I have a tiny little knife and a little tiny pair of scissors, both, you know, first aid or whatever. I think this cheap knife also has a nail file and maybe a screwdriver. I don't know, but to get into things, you never know. So my little knife and that I will probably put my ID in that pocket as well, because it's not something I'll be reaching for a lot. And we don't need to be losing my driver's license in the woods. Um, speaking of ID, I have this, it's called a, um, a road ID. My niece, Sarah, love you girl made, uh, got it for me for Christmas and it has my name. It says that I am diabetic. I am ketogenic and it has contact phone numbers for my niece and my brother in case something should happen to me while I'm out riding my bike. But it also comes in very handy when I'm hiking or backpacking or out and about. I wear this pretty much all summer. So if there's an emergency and I'm unconscious, this ID will notify people of my family that they can contact if there's an issue, just as a aside. It's always a good thing to have. Now, I picked up this little tiny tripod to do things like this. Um, it It's pretty adjustable, but this is gonna come in handy for when I'm out and about and it, um, and I want to like record and things. And it folds up pretty, um, pretty, pretty small and it's very lightweight. So I grabbed that tripod. In here I also have sunblock for my face or body. It's um, waterproof 70 sunblock. And then I have 30 sunblock for my lips. And then I also have some peppermint chapstick cause I like it, but that's important. That's in this bag. And this is all gonna go in the main pouch, but there's also a little zip in this main pouch that I, you know, that'll hold a little stuff. So I put my chapstick and my sunblock, here I'll show you, in this little zip pouch here and it keeps it away. So if it melts, it's not gonna get on my cell phone and things like that. Now, electronics, again with the zip bag, water, not our friend. In here, I have two chargers. One for my cell phone and one that will charge my um, headlamp. So I have my headlamp and this is pretty bright. And it, I like that it um, it's adjustable so it goes down. And it's got emergencies. It also has a red light on it. So I have a headlamp, you'll need that at nighttime because duh, there's no light. And then I am packing this charger pack. This is not a, it's fantastic, but it definitely, if I was going out for more than a day or two, I would get a stronger one. This one is 3000 amps. So it will charge my watch a couple times. So I need to charge it at nighttime. So I'll charge my watch really quick. And then it will charge my cell phone one full charge. So my watch twice and my cell phone for a full charge one time. So it's very important when I'm out there that I'm careful with the battery life on my, la on my iPhone because A, I wanna record and B, in case of an emergency, I need to have some juice. So I will be bringing this with me. If we decide to do a longer, like a week track, I will get a better charger, but this one is fine for now. So that goes in with the electronics. My phone will stay in here. And also part of saving the battery life on things, if you're going out backpacking and it's gonna get chilly at night, sleep with your phone, sleep with your electronics, put them in this bag and stick it in your sleeping bag. Cold weather will drown your battery super fast, like super fast. So when I go to camp, I'm not real tall. I will throw this whole bag in the tow box of my sleeping bag and it will keep it warm at night and it'll keep um, the batteries from dying. While I'm hiking during the day, I will have my phone on airplane mode, which will save my battery. So this all can go in my belly bag if I want, or it can go up on the overhead. I haven't really decided when I get all my stuff on. It will fit in my belly bag, but I'm not sure if I'm carrying it. 
But then the last pocket I have my jelly beans. I have nuts for a day snack and I have a bar. And these will get me through the morning until lunchtime and then I can restack if I need to, if I go and do these snacks. But just, it's very important to keep in mind that you need to feed your body, you need energy. If you're gonna be out for more than an hour of any type of exercise, you're definitely gonna want some type of fuel for your body. And that is it. That is every, ooh. I'm back. That is everything that I'm bringing. That's all of it. So I hope you enjoy. The next video should be the backpacking trip. Should be, if I can get it edited. It's gonna be a hard one to edit, but I don't care, you are worth it. But I wanna show you where we're at, where we're going, how we set up camp, cooking, sleeping, and all of that. So I hope you enjoy, and I will talk with you later. Bye.